Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about adding, subtracting, and multiplying radical expressions. So I'm just going to dive right into this. It's going to be very straightforward. Remember from class that if we wanted to add or subtract, what we need to find are like radicals, meaning we need the same exact in index and the same exact radicand. So for the two examples I have here, uh, notice that the radical is the square root of two and the square root of two, which means they are the same. So I can go ahead and combine these two. So really what I'm focused on is two minus seven and two minus seven is negative five times the square root of two. And then off to the right hand side for the second example here, uh, notice that the first two terms are like radicals. The third one is not. So we can only group the first two. So two minus six is gonna be negative four times the square root of 5n plus 7n. So, like I said, what you're looking for, same index and same radicand. Now, sometimes we're going to need to simplify prior to combining radicals. So, if you look at what we have here, we have 9 times the square root of 50m to the second minus 6 times the square root of 48m to the second. So what I'm going to do here off on the right hand side is I'm going to just going to go ahead and simplify these two radicals first. So the square root of 50 M to the second, I can rewrite that as 25 times two M to the second. And that reduces down into five M times the square root of two. And then for the square root of 48, m to the second, that is going to be, hmm, what's a good one? How about 16 times 3m to the second, and that, re that will reduce down into 4m to the square root of 3. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these two radicals and we're going to put them over on the left-hand side. And remember, for the first one, it's 9 times the square root of 50m to the second. So this will be 9 times 5m times the square root of 2 minus 6 times 4m square root of 3. And then just simplify it just a little bit. 9 times 5 is 45. m times the square root of 2 minus 6 times 4 is 24. m square root of 3. And notice since our radicals here do not match, there's nothing we can do about this. So you would just circle your answer and then move on. The key is remember to simplify and combine. Okay. Now the next example we're going to be looking at are going to be multiplying radicals. So what we want to do is recall from the product property that if you have the nth root of a times b, you can separate and make little nth root radicals that are all being multiplied. So we actually use that to our advantage. All right. But what we're, what you're going to see is instead of going from left to right, like we normally would, we're going to be going from right to left. Okay. So let me show you here with these two examples that I have here. Actually, I have three of them, but the first one, uh, I'm going to do six times three first, six times three is 18. And then two times 10 is the square root of 20. Now I'm going to reduce. I know the square root of 20 is four times five. So that's going to be 18 times 2 times the square root of 5, which is 36 times the square root of 5. Now, I'll do the same thing for the other th other two examples. 10 times 4 is 40 times the square root of 6 times 3 is going to be 18 p to the fourth. Now, from here, we can simplify. I get 40. Square root of 18 is really 9 times 2, p to the 4th. So that's going to give me 40 times 3 times p to the 2nd times 
times the square root of 2, which reduces into 120 p to the second times the square root of 2. And finally, for the last two examples, actually, I think I got uh, one more. So with this example here, notice, we're going to have to use our distributive property here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for us. So I get square root of 6 times the square root of 12, or times the square root of 2 is uh, square root of 12. And then for the second part, square root of 6 times the square root of 18 is 108. Okay? Now, there is something that we can do to kind of help us. So let me show you what that is. All right? Off to the right-hand side. Just going to rewrite the problem again. All right, and what I'm going to do here is this, okay? Six is really three times two. Now, the reason why I wrote that is because I know if I'm going to multiply the square root of six times the square root of two, I need to multiply this by two again. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because when you look at two times two, that is a perfect square. That's really four. Okay? Now, if I'm going to do the same exact thing with the square root of 6 times the square root of 18. I'm going to write 6. However, with 18, I'm going to write 6 times 3. And the reason I did that is right here I have 6 times 6, which is 36. But more importantly, that's a perfect square. See, I got to remember that when I'm simplifying radicals, I am looking for those perfect squares. Okay. Now, if I can find them very easily, I'm going, I'm going to do that. So when I go to simplify this for the first term, this simplifies down into this two times the square root of three plus the second term will be six times the square root of three. Notice that the radicals match, which means I can combine them. So I'm going to get eight square root of three. Now, if you wanted to, you could do the square root of 12 and the square root of 108. You're still going to get the same exact answer. But the idea behind this is why not make it easier for yourself just by keeping the numbers small and trying to find perfect squares as you progress through the problem. So let's go ahead. Let's do this problem. Once again, we're going to distribute. 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 4 times the square root of 7 is going to be plus... 24 square root of 7. Next, I'm going to distribute the second term. So negative 3 times the square root of 7 times positive 3 is going to be negative 9 times the square root of 7. And then negative 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And then the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, I'll write it off to the right here is really the square root of 49, which just turns out to be 7. So this is 12 times 7. Finally, we're going to go ahead. We're going to group like terms. I'll do one step at a time. So we've got 18. 24 minus 9 is positive 15 square roots of 7, or 15 times the square root of 7. And then negative 12 times 7 is negative 84. And finally, we can combine our constant terms 18 minus 84 is negative 66 plus 15 times the square root of 7. Now, with this example right here, we got to be careful. Because if we wanted to, we could totally distribute this. We're going to get the same exact answer. That's fine. But it's always nice if you, if you could just slow yourself down a little bit. And notice that we have conjugate pairs. Notice that the 7s match. Square root of 3s. It's just we have a plus and a minus inside the binomial. So when we have conjugate pairs, all we have to do is multiply 7 times 7 which will be 49, and then positive square root of 3 times negative square root of 3, 
is negative 3. And finally, 49 minus 3 is 46. And that's how we multiply radicals. So I hope this video helped. I'll see you in the next one.